What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to another vlog. If you're new here, my name is Jordan and uh, I have my 1.6 turbo Miata here, which we're actually gonna be working on. Uh, so what you're gonna see in this video or what you can expect hopefully to see in this video is actually um, installing a whole bunch of suspension parts. This is the Miata. It is a turbo car. Um, it's gonna be set up for drifting and therefore we have a whole lot of parts that we're gonna be installing, including knuckles these are modded these are modded knuckles um, that part is cut and made shorter we've got the rear upper control arms which are adjustable so we can get zero camber in the back we don't want any of that camber because we want as much grip as the car is going to be able to handle and i have a feeling that's going to be close to uh zero camber maybe a little bit of camber we'll see we'll take a little bit of fiddling with we've also got the rear knuckles which uh if you know, you know. But we got the rear knuckles that are gonna be going on there. We've got teen suspension, we've got full polyurethane uh, bushings for the entire thing, including the diff, um, as well as uh, new eccentric locks for the bolts, that way the alignment stays in place. Um, we've got the um, ball joints, the tie rods. Uh, we've got everything that's gonna be going on there. So without further ado, let's start Start by putting, lifting the car up and start taking some stuff off of the car. So let's start there. All right, so the car is up and I'm starting with the passenger side front. These are brand new. If you guys watch the, uh, the video, I'll link it up there. Um, these are quite literally brand spanking new, like it's already caked. So what needs to happen is everything is coming out. New coilover. Um, Upper and lower control arms are going to stay. Replace the uh, bushings. Uh, yeah, I'm going to replace all the bushings right there. And then this knuckle is going to get replaced by the pink one. Everything goes right back on with the new coilover. So let's get started with taking everything off. Um, I'm not going to take off the line itself because I don't feel like having to do all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it off and then um, just probably zip tie it over there. Just kind of put it on the side without hurting it. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Everything's gonna work fine. So let's start removing all this stuff. Wow, so I thought I was recording me taking off the, uh, the caliper and the rotor, but apparently I wasn't. But, um, so this is the old knuckle. It is modded, but not in what I would consider the safest way. So that's there. So basically this knuckle was, boom, grab that. This knuckle was uh, drilled right here, and we put that right there, but this, as you can see, this is toast. This is, we've got a replacement for that. Uh, the other one instead is cut, and then this part is moved in and then um, welded again. And it's actually much shorter, so let me grab the other one. So here's the other one for comparison. It is much shorter than that one by a pretty long shot, actually. So we should be getting some pretty serious angle out of it. See that right there? That's gonna be perfect. But I just realized, well one, this is uh, for the other side, but I'm gonna have to take off that hub. I forgot about that. So let's get to doing that. Now, no, very cool. I'm trying to vlog here. All right, so this, this is a cover and it has to come off. There should be um, a big nut underneath there, which I hope I have the actual size to it. And then what I'm gonna try and do is pull it off with a drop holder. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but we're about to find out. If not, then I might have to take off the knuckle and go get this pressed off, but we'll find out in a sec, so let's see if that works. Just this cap uh, that you just gotta 
put your screwdriver in there and tap it off. It's not too difficult. Um, and then we got to take this one off, but I see a little indent there that's got to come out first. So basically open this one up first. And once we open this up, oh, there we go. <laughs> first open this up first. And then once we open this up, uh, this one should just come out. Um, there's no, this, this isn't one that moves because there's no axle behind it. Therefore, it should just undo. Once it undoes, then we should be able to pull it out. So I'll put this thing right here like that and then grab on right here. And basically, as I twist this one in, this one will keep pulling back and it should undo itself at least I hope so but let me get to this and I'll see you guys in a sec all right this one's off it wasn't too difficult I just used a long breaker bar got that off it wasn't all that bad um, so at this point I'm curious I'm curious to see yeah it's pretty on there you can try hitting it with a mallet from the back oh yeah that's not yeah, it's already coming out. There we go. See, I didn't even need to use the other uh, piece, so we're good. That's off. That wasn't all that difficult. Um, nice. Brain doesn't look bad. It looks like this was, yeah, it might have been recently done. Because that came off way too easy. And that looks way too clean in there. But yeah, so that wasn't too difficult. This will go... Now that I've got the right one here, for comparison's sake, that is, yeah, that's gonna give me a lot more angle than I had previously. And this one really just, with a little bit of grease, will sit in there. We'll just go right in there, put the bolt on, and that's pretty much it. Really not all that difficult. But now that we got that off, now I gotta take this one off because I don't need it anymore. So I gotta take this one off, which is all screwed up. This is coming off too. I'm gonna redo the alignment so I'm not gonna really worry about where everything was. But I've got a new one of these. This is obviously getting replaced. I've got the new upper ball joint and I've got an extended one of these. So I'll show you guys that in a sec. But I'm gonna take this one off first. Actually, I'm gonna undo this one because this is gonna be a little bit harder. I'm gonna undo this one and then this one and then that one. Uh, so yeah, see you guys in a sec. All right, so it wasn't all that difficult to uh, loosen that one up uh, but this is how I learned to take these off probably not the right way but this is how I learned so leave that on there and then just smack that but the mallet's not gonna do it so we're gonna grab a hammer and it's off just like that this is already busted so I'm not worried about breaking it Hold right there this one's off I'm gonna take it off from right here. So actually, I'm trying to always think ahead. If I know that I'm gonna take that one off, I'm just gonna leave that like that because I wanna be able to, um, to have a little bit of leverage. Yeah, to take this off, because I know I'm gonna take that off. So now, I need both hands. Yeah, I'm just gonna take this off, actually. So much for thinking ahead, here we go. So now, We've got that big old one, and then this one. It shouldn't. It should be just about the same. It shouldn't be all that difficult to whack these out. Again, got brand new of these ones. So even though these are all cracked and worn, it's okay. It's got new ones. So let's get to that. All right, and we got that off. So as you can see, it really wasn't all that difficult to take off. Um, it was just a matter of undoing the top, undoing the bottom. Um, I because I knew I was going to replace them. I pretty much just uh, took my little hammer, bang, bang, bang up there, bang, bang, bang down here, and it's off. It's really not all that difficult. Um, so this one's off, and apparently now it's stuck. There we go. So that is gonna be replaced by this. It's gonna look sick on there. But we're not putting that on yet because we've got quite a bit of work to do. This one I'm gonna have to like, oh, never mind. I was gonna say I was gonna have to smash it in, but apparently not. Um, I am gonna put grease in there, so I am gonna take it off, but it's going to go in here like so. 
and yeah this is gonna give us a pretty decent amount of of angle so how these knuckles work for those of you that don't know is the closer inside it is the more it's gonna push it out so imagine I'm gonna need both hands for this so bear with me imagine this is the that arm right if you push from right here you get that much angle if you push from in here same amount of push gets you far more angle so that's really what you're doing is by cutting and shortening it you're giving it more angle and here you can see that it's shortened quite a bit my mine was already uh drilled out this one's even more so this one's even more aggressive i'm trying to line them up as best i can it's even more aggressive so this should be a lot of fun and it's also safer because um you've got it all welded and it looks cool so that's off now while I have it on here and while I have leverage, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off because uh, these are gonna get replaced too. So this one should be rather simple as well. And I'm gonna use this guy, a little impact, and that should get it off real smooth. Um, and if I remember correctly, and yes, it, there's one right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two off and then I'll probably take, yeah, I'll take this, the, um, the actual coilover off. Top is already off. So once that's done, um, we'll go, we'll just keep on going through there, but see you guys in a sec. All right, so we got the suspension off. We got this guy off, and uh, this is a lower ball joint. Mine's garbage, but the other one that I have is actually extended, so um, basically all of this section is extended out more so that the wheel, so instead of it being basically right there it's gonna be like this so that the knuckle is actually angled out a little bit more and the wheel will gain a little bit of uh, camber so that's how that works I do have a replacement for these uh, this is the sway bar the end link I do have replacements for those um, I have replacement for this as well I've got the R package one so I get less bumps here yeah so now we just got to take these off and that's everything um, I'll end up taking this off, but not right now. I'm trying to do everything like without taking apart every single thing. Um, so it will mean a little bit more work, but it's less likely that I'll lose bolts and stuff. And I am keeping the bolts where they're supposed to be, like right there, right here. That way I don't lose stuff. So I have terrible tendency to lose stuff. But yeah, so far it looks so good. So we'll keep on going. But these, oh, that's right. I don't have new ones for these. What I, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna clean them and I'm gonna spray paint them so that they look clean. Um, and I'm gonna change the bushings. That's why I was gonna take them out, that's right. So those are gonna get new bushings, those two top ones. Those two are gonna get new bushings and I'm gonna uh, go ahead and uh, paint these so that they all look clean. So I'm gonna take those off and I'll be right back. All right, so the top one's off. I did have to take this off and like bend it down and it was tacked on there so I had to like drill the tack out. Um, it is what it is, I can put that back into place. This one is proving to be a pain. That one was a pain because the bolt is super long. The bolt is super long and it had to come out that way. And it just kept on getting stuck on these guys right here. Like that one. Um, so yeah, now it's time to get this one out. This one's proving to be incredibly difficult. There's very limited range um, as well as it's like seized on there. So. A little bit difficult, but not a big deal. We can totally get it out and then get this ready. That's the last piece that needs to come out and then um, we'll be able to get everything changed out and put them back in. All right, so I finally got that out. It wasn't all that difficult. Um, now I got this guy out and I'm, I gotta take these off. So these are the old bushings. The way that I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna use the three drop puller. I'm gonna grab onto this lip. This is the lip of the actual arm. Grab onto that lip and then just screw that one in. So that it pushes the bushing out and hopefully that works uh well not in a sec <laughs> but yeah that's how i have it grabbed on so i'm gonna get that done on both sides uh, the day is gloomy so i'm not gonna be able to actually paint anything um so i'm just going to change it and then throw it in that's it uh whatever not a big deal but yeah i'm gonna get to it so as you can see it's already starting to actually come out at the bottom so i just continue to do this and it'll come out just like that this one's out um, I did 
drill in to relieve a little bit of pressure so that it like bends in or whatever. Um, I did accidentally nick this a little bit, but it's not a big deal. It's not a lot. Um, and then I just like pressed it the, the whole way out. So that one's out. Time for that one. All right. I got them out from both sides. I had to drill in. Pretty much destroy everything. Um, as well as with the, so those are all out. That was a pain. I don't know how long that took me, but that took way too long. Uh, note to self, I think it's gonna be easier to just take them over to somewhere and get them pressed out and then get the new ones pressed in. But regardless, we got them. So now we've got these guys going in and they've got this thing that they sent you from Prothane and they're marked. And these guys, if I remember correctly, are marked too. Yeah, there it is. I don't know if you all can see it, but right there. They're marked as well. So all we have to do is just figure out what goes where. Um, and they send you the loop ski. There you go. Um, so we should be able to put everything in there and then slap it back on. Oh, I forgot I have to do this, the upper ball joint. I already have it. I don't know how to replace it, so I'm gonna have to figure it out. So let's get to that part. All right, so I got those on. I got those on as well. That one's sort of on, but not really all the way through. And this is what I was talking about earlier. So these are actually extended. Here's how you can tell. So I have them side by side right there and you can see that this one, uh, the new one is uh, extended a little bit. So the mounting points are the same. What's extended is this part right here. And this guy just slides in right here and it'll give us a bit more camber. And it's brand new, so the ball joint's gonna be perfect. So that's gonna get slept on right now and this one's gonna go back in there. All right, got that one right there. The other one's not gonna go on there. Um, I'm gonna take off the uh, the front sway bar because that's getting replaced entirely anyways. Got that on there. By that I mean that. And uh, suspension's right there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and slap that on right now. And they should be almost done. All right, got these uh, coat loops here. Boom, look at that. These are ready to go. So it's gonna be really simple to actually just install. Get this one. There we go. Look at these. Beautiful, all ready to go. So let's get that on the car. So how they came from factory, it looks like it's already a little bit lower. So I'm just gonna go with what they sent. I'm gonna go with what they sent as a baseline and just slap that on. Cause I wasn't looking to lower it more than like an inch anyway. So that's about a half an inch um, lower. That should be good. So we'll get this slapped on. That way I don't have to mess with it because it's already preloaded and everything. Everything's already good, see? Comes with this little tightened up specified torque. This is already like ready to just bolt on. They're the Flex Z. So we'll get this left on there. All right, it's starting to rain, so I gotta do this really quickly, but I'm replacing the tie rods at this point. This is the old and worn. Boot is all messed up. These are the R package ones. So the R package Miata actually came lower from the factory and uh, they, from the factory, they made these actually a little bit different. So it reduces the bump steer. So if you lower your car, the best ones to upgrade to are the R package um, outer tie rods. Um, by the way, these things have so much angle. So I have everything on already. This one's gonna get pressed in, but it's starting to rain, so I'm just gonna slap it on there. I have a, um, a tool coming in tomorrow so I can press it in, and then I'm gonna have to finish the other side tomorrow, but I've got everything where it's supposed to be. Um, I'm just trying to get everything as close as possible so I can put all my stuff away. But this is what it looks like now, and I'll see you guys uh, later, actually. Man, I started putting everything away right at the exact time that I needed to. It's raining now, so. <sighs> One final look at this side. I've got the tie rod there. There's gonna be a new end link and sway bar, so I'm not worried about that. I still need to tighten pretty much everything and get the rotor and everything, but everything is where it's supposed to be. So yeah, let me put this bad girl away. And just like that, we'll be working on this next time. <laughs> All right, now we're on the other side. 
and uh, it's gonna be the same thing as the other side so in an effort to not make this video drag too much we're gonna use some YouTube magic so let's get to it and just like that it's completely changed out I've got that in there the coilovers in there we've got the polyurethane bushings everything looks pretty good everything is nice and tightened at this point so now we head to the rear all right so we're in the back and this is the passenger side we're gonna do this one first because the sun is uh, gonna bake my head if I go on the other side so yeah so first things first uh, as far as this goes I'm gonna start by taking off the caliper then the rotor um, and then get this one off and then uh, pull off the uh, the hub itself once I've got that off then I can start taking off the arms and everything and I can take off the uh, the coilover but uh, with these this is gonna be the top one is gonna be the simplest one because I already have the replacement for it and I don't have to take off the, the other bushings because I can just put the new ones in here um, so that'll be just fine uh, the bushings for here will also be very simple because this hub is actually gonna get replaced I just need um, this like these whatever you call them uh, spindles or whatever uh, so yeah so the only thing that I'm really gonna have to take off is gonna be these guys so this one and then that one um, and the same on the other side that and the one down here somewhere that's really about it um, and then obviously replace the coil over this one should be much easier than the front uh, especially because I've got everything um, laid out in a, in a very easier way so let's get to it so I got that off um, I decided to leave this like that so it just all kind of stays together it'll make it easier to put this back on later I'm just gonna leave that there and it, there's not a lot of tension on this here because I have it um, being supported down there so this is gonna be the, mo the more difficult part this one's grabbing on this nut is grabbing onto the axle itself and um, I'm gonna have to take this one off and then hopefully I can get this guy off rather simply once that's off that's the I believe the hardest part so let's get to that all right so for whatever reason this one just won't come out it's stuck on there it's on there tight I need to go get a har uh, harbor freight breaker bar um, to get this bad boy off because what I have is just not good enough um, so yeah let's cut to that all right so I got myself a long breaker bar and I was able to get this guy out I got the other one off as well the other one actually required a little bit of fire so if you look if you're out there and you want to go ahead and do something like this keep in mind these guys they're on there tight and you may or may not have to use fire uh, typically I don't like to use fire where there, there's gonna be bearings involved but because I've got new uh, wheel bearing I didn't really care so use fire got the other one off that looks good so now this comes off the whole thing and next thing is I have to take these off so let's get to that all right, so here's how I'm gonna try and do it. I've got the three jaw thingy, whatever the heck it's called, on there like this. And what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and give it some smacks to try and break it loose as well as tighten this so that this pushes that one in and then these pull that one out at the same time. And hopefully this should all just come apart and once that comes apart let's see if uh we can lock in there once that comes apart from right there then at that point this will be fairly easy because at that point all i have to do is take these guys off take this um the actual shocks off um i'm not changing the sway bar or end links because quite frankly i lost uh, let's just not talk about it um but anyways that over there comes off that over there comes off and then that one and that one this i won't have to do anything with because it's not going back in i just have to at that point remove the bushings once the bushings are actually off i get to put the uh, polyurethane ones on and then i can just put everything back on and it'll just work so wish me luck on this let's see what happens all right, so this doesn't want to come off no matter how hard I smack it, which obviously I have smacked out of that. So instead of what I'm going to do is I'm just going to buy a new one because I take the easy way out a lot of times. I'm just going to buy a new one. I'm not going to worry about it. 
PV blasted everything because I don't really want to worry about it. So I'm just going to go ahead and take everything off now and put the order in. So starting off with uh, this top one. Already got it nice and loosened. I got to grab that one so I can obviously take this off. And then we'll do these other ones. They're all 14. Shouldn't be too hard. Um, but yeah, let's get to taking everything off. Well, we got that off, but uh, I don't know if you see this, but I'm missing an axle. It came off together. Um, so there's that. <laughs> this really didn't want to come off. Uh, <laughs> interestingly enough, that all stayed together and it came off over here. <gasps> oh boy, story of my life. Okay, now I gotta figure out how to get all this apart. I'm not gonna worry too much about it right now. We continue to move forward. I might just end up taking this whole thing to a shop and just be like, yo, press this out. So this one, I've got to undo the top ones coming out and not coming back in. Uh, the bottom one, I have to undo this still. So this is for the coilover. Shouldn't be too difficult. The sway bar end link. And then the one right there, which shouldn't actually be that difficult. Um, over here, it's got the uh, eccentric. I don't know if you can see it right there, but that one right there, same thing on this side. And yeah, that should be everything coming out. I'll take off the top bolts from here. Uh, you have to actually go inside of the trunk to get them out. Not a big deal, but I can slap everything back on and figure this part out. Shouldn't be too bad. So I'll go ahead and do those. That off, that off. Got that set up to where I want it to be. I don't need anything super aggressive, but that should be enough. That's around there. That should be enough to where it gets me close to zero camber. Not looking for obviously um, positive camber, or is it negative? Negative is when you have camber. Not looking for positive camber. So I, I want the wheel to be like that, right? I'm not looking for this, I'm not looking for that. I want it to be like that. Or as close to that as possible and I think this would be a good starting point and when I'm getting my my alignment done um, we could always mess with it a little bit right about there that should be fine it moves it very little um, in or out uh, which when you lower the car as soon as you lower the car if the car is like that stock you lower the car it goes like that so I should bring it right back to that so we should be good um, but yeah, I just need to take off the two that are holding it up top, this one up top, and then we can go ahead and uh, get the new parts on. So for these, it's gonna be as simple as just putting the polyurethane bushings in. Uh, and then for that one, I do have to actually get that out before I can put the new one in. Once it's done, I can slap everything back on there. I still don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I might take that to a shop and have it pressed out because I don't, I wasn't able to get it off. I do have new hubs coming in tomorrow morning um, so that shouldn't be an issue but the rest of it is the issue uh, so yeah let's get to taking this off and doing the rest of the stuff so enough blabbing for me let's get to it all right so I got the other side completely taken off so uppers go here upper control arm lower control arm goes in those two right there um, so all that's off I just this is hanging right now uh, but now that this is all off, now, I already got them right here. Um, I have to go get this side pressed too because just like the other side, it came off together. So I have to get this pressed off. I have new hubs because I hammered the crap out of these. Um, I'm not gonna reuse this so this doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go get those pressed out because if I'm already doing all this, I may as well just get that pressed out. So I'll get those pressed out so I can put the new bushings in. I'll get this pressed out. I'll press the new um, the new bearings into the back, into the rear, um, which we call this, the uh, knuckle. Uh, and then I can slap everything together. So everything should be done, hopefully today. I hope. So I'll go get that done and I'll see you guys soon. All right, so I finally got all the parts where they need to be. Um, the lower control arms, I took them to a shop and I got the bushings pressed out because I just really didn't want to deal with the headache of that. And 
I got these guys right here. I had to get this all pressed out, but the shop made a mistake and they put the old hub back on there. And then because I banged the crap out of it already, they went ahead and just kind of fixed it because if they took the hub out again, if they pressed it out, then I would need a new bearing. And it's like, wow. So they messed that up, but they put the right, um, the new hub on this one. I don't know how they, they made that big of a mistake, but anyways, I got the um, bushings pressed out of these as well. I've got these uh, new knuckles going on there. And the reason for these knuckles uh, that I'm replacing them is, is very, very simple indeed, actually. So as you can see here, I've got a bracket for the caliper here, bracket for the caliper here, dual rear calipers. So that's gonna be amazing. So these are gonna be pretty much easy to slide in. So we're gonna start on this side, the uh, passenger side. We're gonna go ahead and put on the bushings. I'm gonna put the bushings on. Those already have the bushings. Put it all back together um, and then install those in there and that should be it uh, that'll be the end of this video so let's get to that all right so here's the progress so far nothing is actually tightened I'm having a pretty difficult time getting this one right here I don't know if you guys can see it but it's just so close this one needs to go in here so I can put that big one right there um, but yeah so I got the upper control arm where I want it uh, it still needs to be tightened. We've got the, uh, the coil over on there. The same wire end link needs to be put on there, but the lower control arm's on there. So we're getting there. This is one side, and then I'm losing sunlight really quickly, so I might have to finish this off tomorrow, which is super annoying. But I'll be happy if I can finish this side because that means that three quarters of the car is done. So wish me luck on this. Oh my god, I can't believe it's taking this long to get this done. Oh, and the red poly uh, polyurethane bushings actually didn't fit here. I had to put the purple ones, which come with this kit. This is the drift or die uh, knuckle for dual, dual rear caliper. So I got one caliper, two caliper. Um, but they sent you, they send you um, some purple polyurethanes, and those fit it, but the red ones didn't. So that's fine. Doesn't really matter. Just kind of looks cool. I like purple. But yeah, let's get to it. All right, so last night I got this side all finished up, but it was super late at night, so I didn't vlog literally any of it, but this is all done. The other side is too. Time to get the wheels on here and cut this vlog to an end because it's gone way too freaking long at this point. I already started putting this one over here, and I'll give you guys a, a final in just a sec of how it sits once it's all lowered. <sighs> to say that I'm annoyed is an understatement. Drop the car. The car looks good. The back is sitting, I think, at a really good height, relatively good height. The front's a little high, but not a big deal. I can address that. I went to go start the car. Sorry, right, fine, whatever. I went to go pull that in reverse, and it grinds. The lower control arm, I don't know if you can see here. Uh, let me see if you can, uh, you can't see it. Or uh, maybe, right there. That gold piece is actually touching the rim which is very bad. It should not be touching the rim. That is the lower control arm bolt washer that is touching the rim and it's grinding the heck out of the rim. So not really sure how to fix it, but that's gonna be for the next video. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up today. Um, this was an incredibly difficult thing to actually do uh, because of lack of tools and then the um, just the weather and everything just, Things did not go the way that they should have gone, but that's okay. We're gonna remain positive. We're gonna get this fixed. I have no clue how I'm gonna get this fixed. So if you've dealt with the situation with the drift or die knuckles, please let me know how you fixed it below. I may just have to get 16s and just take care of the clearance issue that way. I'm not sure, but listen, thank you for watching all the way through. Make sure you hit that like, like button, comment any helpful su suggestions you have for this. Subscribe if you aren't already. Most of you aren't subscribed and it would mean the world to me if you did. Uh, especially on a video like this where everything just nothing lined up. But I'll see you guys uh, in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace. Actually, before you go, I forgot to show you guys how it all ended up going. So front is way too, uh, way too tall. 
but I do have some camera which is um, actually that's because of the lower uh, ball joint being extended the extended lower ball joint is doing some stuff there and it looks great I love that um, it just needs more low the rear right now is positive camber uh, because of that control arm the upper control arm being adjustable um, I like the height of it I think it looks really good all right now let's cut it All right, what's up, everybody? Happy Valentine's Day. I know I said that the video was over, but damn, that looks all right. Just like that, we got this one on as well. So I'm gonna go like this. That side being the tip. And 